Okay, here we are. Sharing screen one. Okay, now I should should be recording. Okay, guys. So uh, welcome to this uh, lecture. It has been hard, harder than I thought, but uh, it's a good example uh, on uh, about how things can get wrong. Okay, uh, when you are not expecting. So. It's a good example why we need the software uh, and software uh, engineering. So apparently, so the goal of uh, uh, constructed software, uh, software development is to build software that creates uh, value, okay, in terms of functionality and uh, quality, okay. Then we expect to have uh, a software that does uh, what we expect because uh, it should be uh, helping us in uh, our uh, daily work. And of course, we want that uh, this software has a certain quality, that it works properly when the, it should work, uh, okay. Uh, then, uh, so why it's so difficult to make uh, working, uh, well, high quality software? Okay, so the, this lecture is about, I mean, we will try to answer uh, to, uh, this, uh, uh, to this question, okay? Uh, so, just a moment, where is it? Okay. No. I have too many windows here. So why so difficult? First, because software is intangible. I mean, it's very hard to understand what's the effort for developing uh, uh, a piece of software. Okay, I mean you don't. I mean you don't have anything in your hands. I mean, if you build a, a house, then you have something uh, that has a. I mean, structure, a weight. I mean, something that you can uh, uh, perceive, okay? But when uh, uh, talking about uh, software, well, it's very difficult to understand because you don't have nothing in your hands. Software is very easy, easy to reproduce. Copy, paste, copy, paste. You can uh, reproduce the software as many times as you want, okay? But still, in other uh, engineering products, the manufacturing is really the mostly uh, costly, costly pay, uh, sta stage, okay? I mean, uh, you design your product, then you have the factory. And then when you go to the factory, that's the costly stage. But not in software. I mean, uh, reproducing the product is very uh, easy. But uh, developing the product is the most uh, challenging uh, part. And uh, that's a really labor intensive work. That's no way, at least so far, to automate the process of developing uh, software. Okay? Can we, I don't know, rely on artificial intelligence for producing software? Well, not yet. Uh, we are able to do many things with uh, uh, thanks to AI, but not producing software. Software is a labor intensive work. You try, fail, retry, fail again, and so on and so forth uh, until you succeed to achieve uh, uh, your goal. Okay, uh, that's unit testing. You try test your uh, if it doesn't meet the requirements, uh, may fix the problem, try again, 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 okay? That's why, how we uh, produce software. Uh, software, I mean, everybody can make software. We have uh, coding lectures and coding course for childs. You can download uh, a hub on your uh, iPad and start coding. Okay, That's, this uh, does not make you an expert, okay? I can also change uh, a bulb in my home, but uh, that doesn't mean that I am an expert in power systems, 
okay? Um, everybody can could be able to hack something and produce more software that can easy our life, but that's nothing, okay? It's nothing about uh, quality, okay? Quality are, is the really problem, the real problem that we want to um, solve. Software is also easy, very easy to modify. You get, you download source code from internet, change lines, I don't know, uh, by chance, with, and then the software doesn't work anymore. It's, I mean, it's uh, uh, changing only one line in uh, one million line of codes of uh, software that and makes the software does not work anymore. Okay, um, even if you don't understand what you are doing, that's it's very an issue. And finally, software usually doesn't wear out. Okay, I know the more you use the software, the more it degrades. I mean, no way. So the software deteriorates only because of changes, uh, bugs fixing adding a new uh, feature, uh, this type of stuff. Uh, and that's something that we're going to uh, well, discuss uh, better during this course when we're going to talk about refactory. So how to maintain uh, properly a software after the delivery. Uh, <clears throat> Then uh, we're living in a, well, that's already a while actually, but nowadays uh, software is high, demand for software is high, more and more high and rising. I mean, we have software everywhere. We have software, of software in our pockets because of uh, uh, mobile phones. We have software in our fridge because of IoT. We have software, I don't know, in our car. Uh, I mean, wherever you uh, can imagine, okay? The problem is that much of this software are really poor design and uh, is getting worse because nowadays everybody thinks to be a programmer and then everybody is making software uh, without having a real knowledge on how to make software. So making software is not only programming, Okay, it's not only coding. Writing uh, five lines of Java doesn't mean to make uh, a software. Uh, we are always in perpetual software crisis. Many software are never delivered because, I mean, you start the spaghetti coding and after a while you have so many bugs uh, that you gave up. Okay, that uh, doesn't work. Some of these product software uh, are delivered but never put into use because, I mean, you think they are important, that people are interested in, but uh, at the end, they don't. Some of them are delivered uh, very late because, well, you thought it was uh, very easy, but uh, instead you have you had many different issues and then you had to fix and iterate. Uh, uh, and make more uh, effort and so on and so forth. And then uh, you finish the money because I mean, if we want to make software, we have to pay uh, developers. Then if you don't have money for making, for paying the developers, then we cannot make uh, software. Uh, and uh, well, 99, well, no, 100% of software require modification before they can be fully used and also after i mean remember that maintenance software maintenance is the the most costly activity in uh, software development because i mean you deliver you cannot be able to deliver a perfect software okay you always have some bugs to fix some uh, feature to add because uh, you customers and the users more, always want something more, okay? Uh, <clears throat> that's why we really need to learn how to engineer 
software. Okay, we need the process. We need best practices uh, that allow us to produce software that has uh, a functionality that uh, satisfy the, the final uh, customers uh, and uh, users that have a quality and the value. Okay, otherwise it's just useless uh, exercise, coding exercise. Then, what type of software we can develop? We can develop custom software, usually is for a specific customer that comes to you and say, okay, I need a specific software with this specific functionality, okay? And then you develop in-house uh, uh, to make uh, your customer happy. That can be, well, your boss, okay? Can be well, a functionality for the organization you are working with. Uh, can be generic software that they usually is sold on, uh, on, the, on open market. Can be iPhone or Android app or it can be a you know, word processor, for example, for a desktop uh, machine. Uh, they are usually called uh, COTS because they are commercial off the shelf. So the idea is that you just go to the market and pick you up uh, the software uh, that you need, okay? Uh, can be embedded, okay? Means software that is uh, uh, built into the hardware and this is usually a software for controlling hardware, okay? It uh, can be, I don't know, the control system for a train, can be a control system for a video camera, can be a control system uh, for any piece of hardware uh, that uh, you can imagine nowadays. And this is really hard to change. Okay, usually it's written with really low level programming languages and then you really need to know how the hardware works in order to make changes to uh, this type of uh, uh, software. Uh, there are some real-time software. Uh, real-time software is software that should react immediately, okay, if something uh, happened. And they usually have a safety, I mean, uh, they manage safety critical system or a nuclear plan, for example, or a power system. Something that really needs a quick and fast reaction to recover or prevent uh, disasters or really uh, high, uh, well, big problems, okay? It can be a data processing software that we usually, usually uh, well, used in, uh, for run business. And this might have really security, privacy, and accuracy uh, concerns, okay? Because I mean, we don't want uh, to lose uh, our credit card credentials, for example, uh, from the bank, okay? Uh, and some of the, of the software that we can develop uh, have uh, all these aspects, okay? You have privacy, security, safety. You are embedded, or uh, it can be for uh, external customers, or it can be for your, uh, your own uh, organization, and so on and so forth. I mean, uh, we, can, uh, we might have to build software that has all these different uh, aspects together. So, how to deal with all these things uh, together. So we need software engineering. And what is software engineering? So there are many different uh, definitions for software engineering. This one is the one that uh, I, I prefer. And I say software engineering is the process of solving customers' problem by the systematic development and evolution of large, high quality software system within cost, time, and other constraints. Okay. Uh, notice that there are many keywords in this, de in this definition. So what, what does it mean solving customer problem? What is systematic development or evolution? And what does it mean large, high quality? 
And what does it mean cost, time, and other constraints? Why we have all of these? So let's, well, uh, deep into details uh, with, uh, with these keywords. So let's start. Well, solving pro customers' problem is the main goal of software engineering. We, I mean, if we don't have a problem, that we don't need to develop software. I mean, we want to, I mean, we need to develop software for solving a problem. Solving a problem can be make uh, work easier or automating something really boring activity and so on and so forth. But if we don't have the goal, we don't have a reason for uh, making uh, uh, software. And then we don't need software engineering, of course. But if we have a specific goal uh, provided by the customer, it means that someone is uh, paying us for solving that specific problem. Then uh, sometimes, uh, well, the solution uh, might be buy the software instead of building the software because uh, out in the market that can be a uh, solution available for the specific problem. And then uh, buying a solution is much cheaper than uh, building a new one, okay? Second thing, never over design the software. I mean, Adding unnecessary uh, feature does not help to solve the problem. First, narrow down the problem uh, uh, from the customer. That usually the customer uh, does not know exactly what uh, he needs. As a customer, I mean, in my experience uh, while interacting with uh, uh, companies, they usually come to you and say, "Oh, yeah, I need the software that." does this, this, but we are not sure. Uh, we, we saw something similar on the internet. Uh, we saw some videos on YouTube, but we are yeah, vague idea of what we need, but uh, we don't really know. Okay. Uh, then uh, as we will see, uh, the first activity in our software engineering uh, process will be to narrow down the problem from this vague description to, yeah, something which is small and concise and clear. Uh, and uh, yeah, design uh, a solution. I, as we will see, I mean, this course is about design, okay? Uh, we will see later on during the course uh, uh, that design means finding a solution to a given problem. And if we don't have a problem, we don't have design, okay? A design would be completely useless. Then uh, the requirement engineering uh, module that uh, will start next week will teach you how to make the problem, how to clearly and concisely state uh, what's the problem that we want to solve. And then once we have uh, the problem clearly stated, then we can start with the design phase. Now start reasoning on how to solve that specific problem. And doing this is a collective effort. Then you usually will work uh, in, a, in a team, then you need to communicate effectively with other members and also with the customer, as we will see. So this will be an iterative approach. Okay, you always need to get in touch uh, constantly with the customer in order to, well, understand uh, what's in their head. Then we say systematic development uh, and evolution. As just mentioned, uh, uh, that's an iterative approach. Then you start with, uh, with a very small, uh, um, uh, with a very small uh, uh, release, and then you evolve the release towards the real, uh, the real product, okay? And uh, this uh, is, uh, uh, when I say iteration, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we're going to have a, a set of steps, okay, that we iterate uh, during the, the development uh, 
uh, life cycle. T set of steps are well accepted, okay? Uh, and then uh, they have been uh, also standardized, okay? Then uh, uh, this set of steps are well known and put in practice by many different uh, um, companies around the world. Uh, everybody know what is uh, requirement elicitation, what is development, what is design, uh, validation, and so on. So. Uh, but most development work is evolution. As I said, the most costly and long phase during the uh, software life cycle is maintenance. Because wh when you release uh, your software, then you have I mean, you should keep working on that software in order to evolve it because uh, the, uh, the needs and the problems of the customers and the clients uh, evolve during the time. They always, always have uh, a new need or they always want uh, a new feature for the software, okay? Then uh, this is a continuous evolution of the software. Then we said large, high quality software system, okay? Uh, when we talk about uh, large systems, I mean, they usually are super uh, complicated because they have many different uh, 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 sub uh, systems uh, integrated uh, uh, together. You might have many different subsystems that are interacting with each other. Uh, then it's very, um, very challenging to understand uh, the entire software as a whole, okay? I mean, by means of one person. That's why usually you work in team and every team, every member of the team is usually working on a subset of the feature or a uh, sub-system uh, of the entire system. In fact, the key challenging here is to split up the, the work uh, among the different members and make sure that uh, every single member will achieve his own goal and then, uh, well, properly, so that the, all the subparts can be integrated, put together, and then uh, solve the entire uh, the big problem. So as we will discuss later on in this course, we will uh, discuss about this technique called uh, divide and conquer. So we start with uh, a big problem, we divide the big problem in a set of sub-problems, and then we will devise a solution for every single sub-problem, and then we will re well, merge all the solution in order to um, solve the, uh, the big problem, that, uh, the initial big problem. And uh, well, finally, the end product uh, must have uh, uh, sufficient quality because I mean, quality means customer satisfaction. And our goal as a software developer or software uh, sellers would say, is to well, make the uh, customer happy, okay? If the customer is happy, then we are happy as well because I mean, uh, he will, pay us, okay? Uh, we will reward us with, uh, with money. Otherwise, uh, if there's no satisfaction, the customer will looking for a different uh, developer next time. And then we, we might lose uh, uh, a client. And finally, cost, time, and other constraints. I mean, resources are finite, okay? You cannot think to develop your software forever. Okay, you have a finite uh, amount of time, hours, to work on the software, on the product that you are uh, building, okay? Uh, and of course, the benefit must overweigh the cost. I mean, you, you want to make money out of your product. I mean, if you need uh, one year to make your software and then uh, and you sell it for one million, but uh, it costed you two millions, then uh, that's, that's not a good uh, deal, okay? 
then uh, the benefit must always overweight uh, the cost. Otherwise, uh, it's, uh, it's a waste of time and the money. And remember that you have competitors outside. You are not alone in the market. And usually competitors do the same job, but they are cheaper and faster, okay? As we will see uh, later on uh, in the course when we will talk about uh, uh, software um, uh, requirement solicitation, I mean, understanding the market, it's very important. I mean, you must know who, his, who are your competitors and what do they do, okay, in order to do better. I mean, if you don't do better, you lose your, uh, your, your game. And important, uh, usually inaccurate estimates of cost and time uh, cause yeah, you project failures, okay? If you think, okay, I need one week, and then you need, you take one year, okay? Then, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big failure. Uh, and then usually that's one of the um, most common reasons because a project uh, fails and then, uh, software is never uh, released. That's why we need uh, software engineering. And being software engineer, it means uh, be able to deal with all these different things. All the best practices that allow us to build uh, a software that has value and that has a high quality. Okay, uh, it's not only programming, as I say. Okay, we have uh, many different uh, things to uh, take into consideration. Um, I mean, you you don't need to get your uh, your degree to be a programmer. Okay, what we expect from you when you get out uh, you, the university is that you are a software engineer, not a programmer. You are not here for being a programmer, okay? Uh, that's, uh, that should be your aim, at least. There are many different uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, sorry, guys, we, we're gonna skip the, the break because uh, we, I started late uh, and then uh, I don't have so much time. I have a meeting uh, at noon. Uh, so, I see, uh, there are many different stakeholders interested in software engineering. Uh, there are the users, okay? Those uh, people who will use the software that is, uh, has been developed. There are the customers who pay. For, uh, for the software, okay, that you're going to develop. Software developers, of course, who develop uh, the software. Uh, the development managers, okay, uh, the big guys with the tie that decide how to manage uh, the development process, where to put the resources, uh, what type of uh, um, uh, features should be implemented first uh, and what should can be uh, uh, postponed, okay? So the guy that take decision. Uh, sometimes stuff and that the whole rules can be fulfilled by the same person. I mean, you might be the customer, the developer, the manager, and the user because maybe you are the only one in your, uh, in your company and then you are developing uh, uh, software for running your business, okay? Then you, so some, sometimes can happen that uh, you can uh, fulfill all the, all the different roles uh, at the same time. Then, uh, so since we have so many different stakeholders, okay, we need to understand their perspective to software, okay? The perspective uh, uh, in so to software of the user is completely different uh, with respect to the, the perspective that have a developer, 
to the same software, okay? They watch uh, the same software from the different point of views, okay? And then the beauty of the software is always in the eye of the beholder, okay? Beholder, sorry. Uh, because they have different perspective, they watch the same artifact from different point of view. Okay, and that's the joke. So that's how usually a customer explain the software he needs. Very confused, as, as I told you, they never know exactly what they want. They have a bug idea in mind. And that's how the project leader understand, because I mean, it's so vague and unclear uh, for the customer that always also for the project leader that usually interact with the customer, uh, it's very hard to understand. And then we have the analyst, okay, who has to design the software for solving uh, the problem, okay? But he also has a different understanding, a different uh, perspective of the software, and then that's how he designed the solution. And we have the programmer, okay? That start uh, trying to understand the design and then the program the software to um, uh, the software. And then there is uh, the businessman who sell the software, okay? And then they usually uh, talk in the, at market level, they always exaggerate on the, uh, opportunities and the value of the software that has been uh, uh, produced. The problem of this usually rely on this picture. I mean, lack of the documentation for, uh, for the software, okay? As we said before, uh, software engineering uh, is uh, um, a collective effort then there should be communication between the project leader and the customer, the analyst and the project leader. And I mean, all these guys should talk each other. But talk is not enough, okay? Because natural language is, the, uh, is usually, well, um, sorry, uh, can be misunderstood, okay? That's we need something that I mean, has only one interpretation, okay? Then natural language is not, is not good enough for this purpose. And that's why we're going to use modeling language through this course. We're going to understand how to model. So a model cannot be misunderstood. When you have a class in your class, UML class diagram, you know what is it, okay? Because it has a specific semantic. It cannot be misunderstood from the programmer, for example. Uh, that's, I mean, what uh, operations have been deployed uh, in the system, usually. And then, well, I can just go uh, quick on the, through the joke, okay? How the, the customer uh, is usually built, and then how the software is uh, in support uh, after the, the delivery. And finally, what the customer really needed was completely different uh, with respect to what, is, uh, what it was uh, uh, explained at the beginning, okay? Then, to solve this, we, we will see how to well, validate, okay? We need validation. And we cannot validate uh, the software uh, too late because uh, I mean it can I mean you can um, it can end up with a lost uh, uh, a waste of money and the resources okay as we will see validation will be done step by step okay uh, we always have to validate uh, with respect to the uh, the problem uh, specification and that's that will be still part of the requirement engineering, okay? In the requirement engineering, we will try to, well, make this figure 
as much realistic as possible, okay, in order to, to really closely match the real uh, needs uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the customers. But uh, it's not only a question uh, of uh, uh, functionalities like this in this case. Also the quality, okay, is uh, in the eye of the beholder because different stakeholders have different idea of quality. So what is the quality for a user and what is quality for a developer? Okay, they have different uh, um, expectation from the quality uh, keyword. For the customers, I mean, they want a software that solves the problems. Okay, if it solves the problem, they are happy. But they also want it an accept acceptable cost. They don't want to spend, uh, pay too much for a software. In terms of uh, money and also other resources, for example, time. Okay, because also time has a, uh, has a value. On the other end, there is the user. And the user, for the user, quality means uh, a software which is easy to learn because they don't want to struggle too much for learning a new software. Uh, it should be efficient to use. I mean, if you click a button, do, you don't want to wait for an hour before getting a response from your software. Uh, and uh, most important, they want uh, that the software will provide them uh, with the help, okay, to make the work done, okay. If the software does not help uh, the user to make the work done, then uh, it's useless. I mean, I do it manually, okay. It's faster and I don't have to struggle with something that uh, I don't know uh, exactly how it works. Then there is the developer. And then uh, quality for the developer means something easy to design, okay? Easy to maintain and easy to be reused. As we will see, reusing is very important in the software development. I mean, you don't want to reuse, I mean, reinvent the wheel every time, okay? You know what is the wheel? you know how it works, then whenever you need it, okay, reuse, okay, the, the wheel that has been invented by someone else or by yourself uh, in a, during a previous project. Then reusing, well, reusing does not mean copy, paste, uh, source code from uh, one uh, uh, project to another project, okay? This is not reusing, this is copy pasting. Uh, re we will see what is what does it mean uh, reusing, and then there is the development manager, and then uh, quality for a development manager means uh, well sell more, okay, uh, and uh, make uh, the customer happy while costing less, of course, because uh, development manager always have to manage the resources, okay? Then uh, the less uh, uh, the software cost, the better. And well, uh, also during the maintenance phase, that's very important. As we say, the maintenance is the most costly part uh, in the software life cycle, usually. Then, we need a clear understanding of what is quality. Because, I mean, we cannot fulfill all of this. I mean, this is very generic. What does it mean easy to design? Or what does it mean easy to maintain? Or easy to learn? Okay. We need metrics. If we, we cannot measure something, we cannot understand it. We cannot understand the quality of something that we cannot measure. Uh, we need to measure the quality of our software. In order to measure the quality of the software, we need the quality metrics, okay? Some uh, quality attributes uh, that we want to be able to measure. I mean, we will talk more extensively uh, about metrics uh, later on in the, uh, in the course, okay? That this lecture is just to point you 
uh, about uh, the topics that we're going to touch and discuss during the course. First, usability, okay? Learn, uh, easy to learn. Uh, it means how much uh, faster the users can learn the software and get benefits from the software, okay? That's usability, I mean. Efficiency, so how much resources are used by the software, okay? In terms of a CPU, memory, uh, hard drive, I mean, if you need to store something and so on and so forth. Okay, that's very important. To measure the performance, okay? That's why we're gonna have a performance engineering module in, the, in this course, in order to understand the efficiency of a, of a, um, a software. The reliability, I mean, uh, uh, he's the, uh, is the software doing uh, the job correctly, okay? We, we expect usually that the software do not fail. If we ask for uh, something, then we expect that the software is going to provide exactly what we ask for it. Uh, maintainability, how much easy uh, he is to change uh, software if we want to make any, um, um, any modification or if we want to add uh, some uh, feature, okay? And then we're going to talk about refactoring later on in the course. That's also very important activity since uh, uh, when you will start working uh, in a, a software house, uh, most probably you're going to deal with uh, legacy software. Okay, it's, it's quite impossible that uh, your uh, 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 boss will ask you to develop uh, a software from scratch, okay, from Greenfield software. Usually, uh, you start working for a company and they ask you, okay, to fix problems or to adapt uh, a software to, for a new customer or uh, add a new uh, feature to the software, uh, uh, the, the actual software and so on and so on. But that's uh, understanding how much maintainable is a software is very important to understand uh, uh, the quality. And the reusability. As I say, uh, to understand which are the parts that can be reused in uh, other projects, okay? So you don't have to reprogram or reinvent the wheel every time, okay? And still, reusing is not copy-paste from a previous project, okay? That doesn't work and should be avoided. Sometimes can happen that uh, qualities, uh, quality attributes can conflict uh, each other, okay? For example, uh, if you want to increase the efficiency because you need more efficiency, these could reduce the maintainability or the usability because in order to increase the efficiency, for example, you cannot use uh, frameworks, okay? You maybe you have to write uh, really low level uh, code, and then uh, the more the lower you go uh, with the programming uh, uh, language, uh, the more difficult it is to reuse your code. Okay, sometimes you really need to I don't know uh, make uh, uh, some tweaks in order to tune the performance of the software. Okay, but when you tweak, then uh, it means that you are going down uh, in, the, in the level of ab abstractions. That's something that we also discuss uh, uh, later on during the course. Uh, and sometimes, for example, increasing the usability reduces the efficiency because you might have to make a more fancy user interface for helping the, the, the end user to interact with the, uh, with the software, 
that by, by this means that you could overcomplicate the user interface. And then when you overcomplicate the user interface, so you reduce the efficiency because you, you need more processing power for, um, uh, for rendering the user interface. For example, I don't know, uh, increasing the usability could mean to have augmented reality, okay? But augmented reality has a cost. A cost means uh, memory cost. I mean, you need to increase the, the, the amount of memory in your, uh, in your computer. You have to uh, buy a new uh, video, uh, video card able to render uh, augmented reality and so on and so forth, okay? And then uh, also as a, uh, a cost in terms of processing, okay? You need more information to process and this can slow down uh, the, uh, the software. Then you can well, lose inefficiency. Uh, then setting the correct set of uh, quality objectives uh, is very uh, difficult but also it's very important, okay? Because you always design to meet the objectives. Then if you make the good objectives, then you have a, a proper and well-stated problem, then you can start to design a solution for uh, such specific problem, okay? That's important. And this, uh, so having a really narrowed and well stated problem uh, avoids also over engineering, okay? Start to, well, spaghetti coding, spaghetti designing uh, uh, the, 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 the solution for an objective that is not really clear. Uh, and that's another thing. So optimizing is also very uh, necessary sometimes because uh, um, you, as I said, you have constraints in terms of time, money, and other type of resources, okay? Uh, then we need to optimize and find the trade-off between quality and constraints. So uh, there are two different types of criteria that we can uh, uh, use uh, for evaluating a software. External quality criteria that are usually uh, uh, how the system is when observed from the point of the user uh, point of view. And then the users always look uh, to this uh, type of uh, uh, criteria. They look for functionality, they look for usability, efficiency, and reliability. Okay, users want something that works, that provides the proper functionality to easy their work. They want to use it uh, uh, fast. They want to learn faster and then they want to easily use uh, this software, these uh, functionalities. It should be efficient and also uh, reliable as we uh, discussed so far. And then we have uh, some uh, internal criteria. Okay? That's the developer point of view you in, the, in this case. And these uh, are very important for us because they characterize the aspect of the design, okay? We talk about design and we want to um, uh, measure the quality of our design. That's, and then we are interested on this type of uh, quality criteria, which are called internal. Uh, they have uh, an effect on the external quality attributes, of course. For example, maintainability, reusability, but we're going to uh, discuss uh, many other uh, internal criteria, for example, to understanding the quality of the code that you are uh, developing, okay? How, uh, how well the code has been done during the, the development process. More, uh, two different types of uh, quality, short term and long term. Uh, short term means, okay, what's, uh, are we satisfying 
the customer needs now, okay? So are we satisfying what the customer uh, asked us, okay? Um, and then we have long term, okay? So in the long term, we usually should, uh, we should deal with the customer future needs. Of course, we, are, we don't know what are the future needs, but should, we should be ready to deal with them as soon as they are on the table, okay? Uh, we, we know for sure that the customer will have some future needs because the world is evolving and customers are evolving within the world and then we have to follow this evolution as, uh, as developers. Then we, we don't know what are the future needs, but we must be ready to satisfy uh, the customers whenever it comes to us say, okay, I need a new feature. Okay, we, we cannot answer, yeah, but 10 years ago, you didn't need it. And now why you want a new feature? Uh, should I remake uh, the software? Yes, you should, if you don't want to lose uh, the customer. Uh, still, you have competitors in the market and uh, the customers can always say bye-bye and go somewhere else. And another uh, very important thing that we, well, that's even more important nowadays. It's scalability. You, you should be ready to deal with a growing number uh, of clients, of data, or whatever. Okay, so uh, you might have start uh, uh, develop the software that works for uh, I don't know in the cloud for three people, but tomorrow you have uh, one million customers. Then you have to adapt. That's what uh, happened to uh, Facebook, uh, Spotify, Netflix. So they started with a very bad uh, web page, but suddenly they, I mean, they had uh, one million subscribers for this. They. Um, their services. Then they had to evolve completely their own uh, ICT infrastructure and the software. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, they didn't go from zero to one million uh, customers uh, in a snap. Okay. So it took years and they worked hard during this year to evolve their own software from a garage uh, made software as it was uh, Netflix at the beginning. Uh, towards what, what, it, what Netflix is nowadays, okay? And same thing for uh, all the other big players, uh, Spotify, uh, Facebook, Google, okay? Uh, Amazon, and so on and so forth. They start very small and evolved uh, their uh, software systems. Uh, so I said, uh, uh, before, most of the projects uh, out there are evolutionary or maintenance projects, okay? Uh, it means that when you go uh, in the real world, uh, usually people ask you to rework or refactor or add new functionality to legacy systems, okay? Uh, there are some uh, uh, I mean, some uh, companies, uh, without saying the name, that still have software developed uh, 20 years ago in the Turbo Pascal. I don't know how many of you knows what uh, Turbo Pascal is. It was, yeah, very old programming language. Uh, now I think it's only for nerds. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if anyone else, uh, uh, is still using Turbo Pascal. But there are some companies out there that are still running software developed uh, 20 years or more years ago, okay? Because, I mean, they, they used it years ago and then, uh, okay, that's it. Never changed. Sorry. So, 
Usually, these uh, evolutionary uh, projects are corrective, I mean, fixing bugs that are, uh, I mean, we, there are always bugs in, uh, in the software. Then we always have to fix something. Uh, they might be adaptive projects, so changing the system in response to changes in operating system. For example, you upgrade to the last uh, uh, Windows 10, but uh, the software was made to work on uh, Windows 95. Yeah, you, you might don't know what's Windows 95, but it's a very old version of Windows release 95. It's a, Windows 10 is completely different than uh, Windows 95. Then you, I mean, the recompiling the source code is not enough, okay? You might have some, uh, you might need to well, change something into your uh, source code in order to make it working with the new operating system. Or can be a change on, on the database because uh, also the database can evolve during the year. Or because the rules and the regulations are changed. Uh, I mean, we are producing software that are supposed to work in the real world. And the real world, I mean, we have a society and society is uh, regulated by means rules and regulations. If rules and regulation change, then we have to change the software accordingly, okay? Because otherwise we are out of loop. Though there are some many different things that can change uh, during uh, the lifetime. They can be announcement project, okay? New feature because new uh, needs uh, from, uh, uh, from the users or just re-engineering or perfective projects. So changing the system internally in order to improve performances, quality, uh, usability, maintainability, whatever, uh, whatever uh, aspect we want to improve uh, in, in, our, um, in our software. Yeah, we're going to understand, well, discuss better about re-engineering and refactoring. Uh, sometimes we are we just think uh, uh, on the refactoring with well uh, uh, replace uh, class name or method name in our code. That's not the only type of refactoring that we might have. We might uh, refactoring might means to reshape completely the software architecture of the uh, of the system, uh, and that's not easy. Uh, so, last but not least, some uh, um, common activities uh, uh, that uh, a software engineer usually uh, deal with. First, requirement and specification. That's always the first activity. Uh, without a requirement, we don't have problem. Without a problem, we don't need software engineering. Okay, because we don't have any solution uh, to device. Uh, but what does it mean, requirement? First, we should analyze the domain. We need to understand the, the background. I mean, if someone asks us to uh, build the software for home banking, okay, first, we need to understand what is home banking, what type of uh, uh, functionalities are usually provided in that specific subdomain. Okay, we, we cannot be a domain expert for every domain in the real world, okay? Then we need to understand what's, uh, what's the domain is about, okay? Uh, a domain analysis uh, means, uh, uh, well, interacting with domains expert, okay? You don't have to study and being, uh, become an expert uh, in uh, home banking, for example, but just to interact with the experts. Then, once you have a knowledge uh, about uh, the, the domain, then we can define the problem, okay? Uh, and define the problem is narrowing down the scope of the system. I said before, usually the customer has a bug idea of what do, what do they need, okay? It's our, um, 
goal or higher, higher uh, let's say, uh, duty to interact with them as make uh, the, um, the problem well defined. Then once the problem is defined, we start gathering the requirements. So means obtaining input uh, from as many sources as possible. Uh, interacting with the users, interacting with uh, other uh, customers, interacting uh, with the developers, okay? Uh, we need to, so, to interact as much as possible with others to understand which are the real requirements. So the real functionalities uh, uh, and quality aspects that uh, the, um, the software should provide. Once we have the requirements, then we can start to analyze the requirements, okay? It means organizing all the information. And then we write, finally, the requirement specification, okay? Detailed instruction about how the software should work, should behave, okay? Once we have this requirement specification that uh, is usually, um, well, it's usually a document containing the domain analysis, the, the problem, the set of uh, functionalities that the software should provide, the set of qualities that uh, the software should meet, uh, and so on and so forth. Written and model it, because I said before, we need a way to not be misunderstood, okay? Then we will use uh, uh, UML, uh, essentially diagrams, uh, to model all the aspects, okay? Functional and non-functional aspects of the software. So once we have this description, then we can start with the, with the design. Now we have uh, a problem. So when we have... Uh, a requirement specification document, then we have a problem. And then we start thinking on how to solve this, uh, this problem, okay? And we start with system engineering, so what type of order we need, what type of software we need, and then we start making the software architecture, dividing uh, the system uh, into the subsystem uh, and then deciding how these subsystems will interact each other. Uh, as anticipated before, divide and conquer. So get the big problem, divide the big problem in uh, many uh, small sub-problems and then solve the sub-problems and put all the solutions together. Okay, that's the idea behind the uh, software uh, architecture. So how to architect our, uh, our software. Then once we have this uh, high level uh, architecture for the software, then we can go deep into the design phase and then start designing how to build and construct uh, each subsystem. Still divide and conquer. Finally, we have, uh, so once we have the business logic working, then we can start thinking about uh, the design, the user interface, okay? Uh, usually, as we will see, uh, solving the problem and, uh, yeah, letting the user interacting with the, the software are two different things, okay? We should always avoid to put design a user interface together. This must be, well, clearly separated. Two different uh, concerns addressed in two different uh, uh, places. Uh, and data, okay? So deciding how the data will be stored and uh, where, okay? Can be in the cloud, can be uh, in uh, your server or, I mean, somewhere else. I say two, I want to highlight uh, once more these two things. Modeling, it's very important. We're going to stress uh, this concept through the, uh, through the course, both 
in the requirement engineering module and in the performance engineering module. Uh, modeling is very important, okay? Uh, because it allows us to create a representation of the software. And then if we have a, a representation of the software, we can reason on the properties of the software be, before implementing the software. Having uh, models allow us to well, forecast the, uh, if the, the software will work properly, if the software will uh, meet uh, the customer expectation in terms of functionalities and qualities before starting the development of the software, okay? Then we can, uh, it's very important that we understand that how much modeling is important and how to model uh, software that we want to uh, develop, okay? And the important that this should be performed by means of uh, formal or in our case, a semi-formal notation because we're going to use uh, UML, okay? And UML diagram cannot be misunderstood. So once you have a, a, a UML diagram describing the, the, the software behavior, okay, developer uh, know exactly uh, how to implement it. Uh, and then uh, programming, of course. We are not very interested in programming. I mean, we, we expect uh, that you are able to program. Uh, well, in particular, by means of Java. Uh, then that's something that we also are going to discuss deeply is the quality assurance, okay? How can we ensure that uh, the quality objectives for the software are met or not, okay? And then we're going to discuss some metrics to evaluate uh, uh, the software, uh, well, both the design, that the model of the software and the software itself uh, against the uh, quality um, properties that we want to achieve. Uh, and then finally, there is this deployment, okay? Uh, how distributing and installing the software and other components uh, uh, in the system. And that's part of the development uh, phase. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, do you have any question? Either here or on Zoom, or, uh, or via Slack? Okay, then uh, if you don't, um, thank you. Uh, sorry for the <laughs> inconvenience, <laughs> so today. I uh, really hope that next week is going to be better since uh, Francis uh, will stream from Kalmar and uh, he has technicians there that can help him. Uh, then hopefully uh, everything will work. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you.